It's a beautiful fall morning here in Brandenburg, Kentucky, and we're at Jody's farm. Jody's one of our artisan makers, and he's on a 300-acre parcel. He's got 99 head of cattle out here, and he's got a ton of timber. It's been five years since the first build was founded, and it's time to refresh our front space. And we want to build some unique furniture that illustrates our artisan qualities. So rather than go buy standard wood, we're going to go harvest our own. cutting that tree you got to be slow and you got to be cautious because you got to know if it starts to move on you which way it's going to go. Um, that initial cut on there, the V cut that typically rocks it uh, in the direction of fall just wasn't deep enough. I was slowly cutting and feeling uh, the tree at the same time to make sure it wasn't going and then you know Jake came up he could see from the spotter's position that it started to go uh, actually in the, uh, in the wrong direction so then we we had to go in and uh, take a deeper cut and then uh, it went right exactly where we wanted it to go. You got to know your trees, so. Here comes the team. So the reason we're using these horses today as opposed to bringing in, say, a skidder or a tractor, this method does the least amount of damage on the forest by using the, these horses. When you bring in modern machinery and modern automation, you've got to take down a lot of trees to get it inside the forest. With these horses, we can get into some pretty rough terrain, hook up and drag them through. And when we're gone, the forest goes back to not even knowing that we were there. So they're a big value and a big benefit. Say hi, Bob, King. So we are gonna start dragging these out to where we can now get them loaded. So uh, here we go. Let's roll. So we've made it to Baghdad, Baghdad, Kentucky. We're about 10 miles east of Shelbyville, and we're at the home of Dave Merchant. Dave is a retired school teacher who cuts lumber for various folks in his spare time. Um, Dave has agreed to allow us to bring our logs out today and, and plank those out in various shapes and sizes, say four quarter lumber and some, some larger pieces. Now when we're done, we're gonna put it in this building behind us. This building behind us is a kiln. We need to dry that lumber out before we work on it. You want to listen to the engine speed is what you're really listening for. If we get too fast, it could bog the engine down. What it'll really start to do with the wood, it'll start making wavy cuts. Wavy cuts occur when I have a dull blade. The species I'm cutting will affect it. Ash cuts pretty nice. Uh, if we got into white oak, it'd get harder. Hickory get really hard. Your persimmons is going to be the harder stuff we cut. I know of three ash species here in Kentucky. The green ash has got the beautiful clear white lumber, which is what you have. The other ash is gonna have more heartwood in it. You're gonna see more browns and tans. So behind me is the kiln that our lumber's drying in. It's about 105 degrees in there right now. That moisture that's in the wood is actually gonna come out of that lumber. We're gonna condense it in that, the condensing unit in there. We're gonna let that moisture run out on the ground. Once that wood is dry, we're gonna come back out, we're gonna pick it up, and we're gonna take it down to first build, make some really cool furniture out of it. It's gonna take us about 45 days, so stay tuned, we'll be back to get it. <laughs> 